What's up guys, my name's Luke and welcome back to another tutorial. So as some of you guys may know, I started my own company called Motion and Design where I mainly specialize in creating 3D product advertisements for companies. So I thought I would start a new series where I actually broke down some of the ads that I've created for companies so that maybe you guys can learn something and be inspired to do your own thing and you know, make some money off of doing what you love. So yeah. This ad over here uh, that we're going to watch is for Edifier. It's their M230, which is a portable speaker, and I was tasked with creating an advert for them. So I wasn't really given much instructions, mainly just to make something kind of fun looking. So yeah, uh, let me show you the video, and then we'll break down how I did it and some small techniques throughout. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. Let's start by watching the video together. Awesome. So this is kind of a old ad, but I still thought it's a pretty cool ad. It's quite simple. But that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys, is that even though it's quite simple, it can still look really good. So I thought I'd just show you some simple techniques just to show you that even if you don't have much knowledge, you can still make stuff that looks really good and can seem professional and you can make money off of it. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. So I started this off by creating this basic cloth simulation where I wanted the cloth to kind of just hit the speaker and then slide off of it. Why? Because it looks nice. And a lot of the time, that's a good enough excuse. So yeah, that was a pretty simple effect. I'm gonna show you how I did that just in a new project over here. So let's just make our little speaker. So there's our speaker. Doesn't that look great? I'm sure it has amazing sound quality. But let's add a collider on it and let's get a plane. So with um, the new release of X particles, they instead of having to go in and actually create the, I mean, the cloth by you know adding constraints and all that stuff, now you can just go to Insidium, go to X particles, dynamics, cloth, and then create cloth, and just like that, you have a cloth simulation, which is really cool. So we don't need gravity for our scene because I just wanted it to kind of fly off and then hit the wall. I'm just going to make a basic wall over here. So I'm not going to go in and completely break down all the shots and like show you exactly how I made them just because a lot of them is quite simple. So I kind of want this uh, to be intended for you guys to take the ideas of this and then do your own things with it. Uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoy this. Let's add some wind over here. So let's go to add some wind, shift C, and then just turn this like that. So now when we press play, it should go hit it didn't hit, it went straight through it. Let's take this. And now it should go. Hit that and then move on. So as you can see, when it hits it, it's not very cloth-like, it's quite thick. So an easy way of fixing that is just by going in here and adding some more segments. The one really nice thing about how they've introduced this cloth system is the way that it's very procedural so we can constantly add or remove segments uh, without having to actually convert this into an editable object so it gives you a lot of flexibility and let's see what that looks like now and that's a lot better that's almost exactly what we're looking for it looks very much nice like cloth hits that and then flows away so we don't need to add too many segments over here because now we can just throw this in a subdivision surface and it will smooth out all the edges. Another thing we can do is to add a cloth surface. So let's go over here, add the cloth surface over here, and then just add some thickness to it. So maybe like one centimeter should be good just to give us some thickness over here. And let's see if that works. Let's just 
increase this to make sure it hits the wall. Add the collider over there. It's going to be a little bit slower because of the cloth surface and the subdivision. But you can always turn this off and then when it comes to the render, then turn it on. So yeah, that looks really nice and that's almost exactly what we had when it came to the render. So you might have noticed that when the cloth hits the corner over here, it is a very sharp corner, so I think I would have um, beveled this. But you'll see that it kind of has that kind of weirdness to that. A quick fix for that is if we go Command D, go into the X particles of here, and then turn up your subframe steps. That should solve that problem, and you won't have that anymore. Cool, so that's that effect. So cloth hits it, then moves to the side. So the reason that it's static in the beginning is because I only wanted it to start rendering from about frame 60. So I have a keyframe over here on this null object, which I'm just using to pan around the speaker over here. I cached it so that I can just automatically, when I export, just export from frame 60 to frame 180. That slides off, which is quite nice. And then I just had a further shot which is, um, so this is something that uh, took me a while to figure out, I'm not gonna lie, back in the day when I first started out, was how to change cameras. You would think that's a pretty simple thing, but I could never figure out how to do it. So yeah, I'm sure there's like one or two people out there who still don't know how to do it. I mean, it's very basic, but if you go over here into this floor over here and then click, click on stage, that is pretty much what you use to swap between different cameras. So for instance, I have a stage over here where at frame 60, you'll see there's a keyframe. I have it on this octane camera. And then when it gets to 120, then we switch to this octane camera. So all the way around this camera and then goes to there. Very simple, but surprisingly, I didn't know anything about it. So yeah, that's pretty much the basics of this first shot over here, just a simple, camera moving around with some depth of field. Um, let me actually just show you basics of depth of field in case some of you guys just don't know. I mean, yeah, we all have to start somewhere. So if, to get depth of field, we have this nice little F over here, which is a nice, it's called a foc uh, oh, pick focus. So yeah, you just click on what you want to focus on. So say now I want to focus on the wall back here. I mean, you would never want to focus on the wall, but yeah, you click over there. Then you then go into the octane camera, go into the octane camera cat, tag, thin lens, depth of field, and then you can change how you want it. So the focal depth is pretty much what you want to focus on. So that's what this focus picker does. If we click over here, you'll see it changes the focal depth. The aperture is how much, um, you know, it will be in or out of focus. So we have these options up here, which you can mess around with to change the type of bokeh or type of depth of field that you're going for. So that's the basics of this first shot. Pretty simple, but it looks nice. And at the end of the day, that is what's important. I think if I had to redo this again today, I think I would have done a little bit more for the composition of these shots because they are kind of simple, but even though they are simple, they still are effective and it's still quite enjoyable to watch. So another thing just to add some spice to the scene, I just added this tree over here. So if we go out of this camera, let's just turn off the stage. If we had to go out of this camera, you'll see that this room is literally just a box and over here we have a tree that's just catching the sunlight to cast over here it's extremely simple scene i mean that is as simple as you get but because of the framing of the shots it can look quite interesting so yeah let's jump into the second part of the shot so here i think in the beginning over here we just had a few different angles just kind of linear camera movements of panning around and then panning up and down but just kind of showing the features of the product so over here to get this effect this is also pretty simple this is just taking a cloner so let me show you over here so we have cloner let's make our little block over here add a cloner Let's just bring that down like there, increase this. 
and then all I had to do was keyframe this and then we get this nice little twist to it. Pretty simple effect, but it looks really nice and it's quite satisfying. To get this effect of the floor, you'll notice the floor, it kind of randomly moves up and down to get this pretty cool effect. So to do that is also really simple. Let's go over here, let's change this to grid array. Um, and let's give it like 12, 12, and drag that out, 2000, and let's drag this down like that. Cool. So to get that effect, I went into the MoGraph over here, went into Effectors, clicked on Random, and so this is a little much. I don't we think we want anything on the X and the Z. We only want it on the Y axis. And to get it, I went over here into noise and then just change the speed over here. So now if we press play, they're going to randomly move. Another really simple effect. But I think what this shows you is that really simple effects can make it look really nice. So you don't really have to have a crazy amount of skills to be able to actually take your talents and make some money off of it. So yeah, that is pretty much the basics of the shot. Again, cameras, the camera movement in the shots, I mean in this uh, ad that I did is extremely simple. It's just very basic linear camera movements. Actually a little tip on that, that I figured out is that, so if we have camera movement, let's go into our test subject over here. If we have camera and we're moving from here to here. So by default, it will automatically go into a S curve, uh, sorry, a spline curve, where at the bottom, it's like that, it's just like slow, goes up and then slows down again. So if you want to send our linear one, instead of having to go all the way in here, selecting this and then going like that. I mean, it doesn't say, it's not a lot of time that you're saving, but just by selecting both these keyframes or just an individual keyframe, you're able to change the interpolation over here. So if I had to select both of these and now click linear, now it's just gonna be static and linear compared to if you did that, where it's slow, fast, and then slows down again. It all depends on what you're looking for. But yeah, that's just a quick little tip that has saved me some time. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. And if you do, I think I'll make some more of these. I have a whole bunch of ads that I could break down where I can teach you some pretty cool effects, some camera movements, techniques, and even some in-camera post-processing effects to get your renders to look extra crispy. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you do, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I put out content every week. I'll be sharing this file on Patreon if you guys are interested, although it will not include the speaker as I'm not allowed to share that as it was part of the contract with the company. But you can still use the project file and put your own products in there and even use it as like a mock test to send to clients. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you guys next week. Cheers.